Big Story by Zach Lowe and Adrian Wojnarowski on November 23rd. One of the things that was in here was a mid-season tournament. The idea has been batted around and has never worked. All right, so why hasn't it worked? Here's the problem. There's no incentives for the players. I've heard money getting thrown around. Well, that's these players already make a ton of money. That's not, It's not going to excite them if there was a $20 million prize for the winning team. I've heard people talk about a lottery pick. Well, if I'm Kawhi Leonard, what do I care if the Clippers get a lottery pick? That's just somebody that can take my job or force me to get traded or who knows? Like these guys don't care about anything other than getting through the playoffs and winning the title. And in my opinion, that's how you would have to incentivize them. All right. So how do you do that? My first goal is to get to 72 games for the regular season. I think that solves a bunch of different problems. For one thing, it works out perfectly. You'd play everybody in your own conference three times. You'd play everybody in the other conference twice. And you're done. Great. 72 games. Well, unfortunately, we're lopping off a lot of money with that. We have to replace it. How about a mid-season tournament? Okay, well, what are the incentives? How do we get these guys to care? Here's how you get them to care. At the 35 game mark, we have the Russell Cup in New York City. Named after Bill Russell, not Russell Westbrook. Of course. The top 14 teams by record are invited to the Russell Cup. And the top seeds in each conference get a bye. They are automatically advanced to round two. So now we have three against 14, four against 13 on down the line. All right, so first round, it's worth one win. Now we get to the second round. There's only eight teams left. That's also worth one win. We get to the semifinals. Now there's four teams left. It's worth two wins. We get to the finals. That's worth four wins. Plus the 31st pick in the draft. That's a little out of bonus. Okay, so what do I mean by four wins, two wins, all that stuff? I'm saying we take the regular season record of these teams. So let's say the Celtics finish 50 and 22, but they win the Russell Cup. You add that to their record. We have that whole standings the way they would normally look. And then you have a separate thing to the right of it where it has your tournament record for the midseason. So you'd have those points next to it with a total number of points for all your wins. That becomes their regular season quote unquote record. And that's how we would decide who would make the playoffs. Now think about we're at like the 30 game mark. Only 14 teams can get into the tournament. You're gonna, we, we'll, we'll be talking about it. There's going to be some teams on the bubble. We're going to be wondering who can get the top seed in each conference so they get the buy in round one, which is basically a free win. It'll be a conversation starter. That's right around when we start getting bored with the NBA about just the narratives and stuff around game 28, game 29. Now we'd actually be like, holy shit, the Russell Cup is coming. Who's going to get the one seed? Who's going to make it? What are these matchups going to be like? All right, so what do we do with the other 16 teams? Well, they're playing in the Chamberlain Cup. You know why he named it the Chamberlain Cup? Because he won nine less titles than Bill Russell. Yeah, that's why. The bottom 16 teams by record. First three rounds are worth one win each. And then the finals are worth two wins. Plus the 32nd pick. You get a high second round pick. Plus the chance to gain a little momentum. These games, in my opinion, you take these and you sell them to like The Zone or ESPN+. Plus. This is like just perfect content for these streaming services. Somebody's going to want these, even though they're the worst teams. You stagger them in ways so that they're never competing against the Russell Cup. And we just do this for like 10, 11 days. And now there's real stakes. Now here's the other wrinkle. Because we want people to care about this entire season and we want real stakes. You know that playing tournament where they talk about 7, 8, 9, 10? I want to go deeper. I want higher stakes. How about this? Only the top five seeds in each conference are guaranteed playoff spots. And if you're not a top five seed, you want to make the playoffs, you're the sixth seed, you were on the cusp, you didn't quite get in, you didn't get one of those top five spots. Well, you got to play the 11 seed to get in. Six versus 11, seven versus 10, eight versus nine, six games total, single elimination, and that's it. If we're only guaranteeing five playoff spots, in each conference. People can't fuck around the regular season anymore. I'm sorry. You can't do the load management as much if you're worried about, oh man, we might not be a top five team because who saw this Dallas thing coming and now there's six good teams in the West and we got to get our shit together. I think it would completely change the mechanics 
of how the teams in the top five or six operated, I don't think they'd be able to rest guys as much. And then the other thing is from a tanking standpoint, instead of just eight playoff teams in each conference, and then basically if you're not going to make the playoffs, you just throw your season away and you start losing games intentionally and doing all the other terrible stuff we've seen. Now it's like if you have a chance to get a nine, 10 or 11 spot, which is really a group of about, you know, five or six teams in each conference, they'd have to take that seriously. Why wouldn't you try to make it? It's not going to affect whatever your lottery record was because it's still, it's that's still done by record, whatever. The goal of all of this is how do we win the title? How do we space the season out in a really fun way that keeps everybody's interests? I think it would be really fun. I I think this is the only way you can do a mid-season tournament. I don't think I don't think paying the players, rewarding them with lottery picks, all that stuff works. But if you weigh the wins in the tournaments at mid-season, that has some great benefits. And if you cut down the number of guaranteed playoff seats, people can't just shut it off when they want to. That would be the goal of it, right?